what is going on supreme performers creative warriors and replay viewers guys i am super super excited um today and i feel so grounded and so in my body and so in the now um because this interview is something that i've been looking forward to what's up matthew peters good to see you brother and uh, this is something that I've been really looking forward to um, for, it looks like I'm here and I'm getting a, what's up Dave? Good to see you Dave Gieselman. Guys, go ahead and let me know that you can see me and that you can hear me because I'm also hearing from my guest today that he's seeing a frozen screen. So let me know if you can see me, if you can hear me. So give me a thumbs up, give me a like, give me a love, make sure that you can hear me. And for those of you watching on replay, I'm super excited because you get to see me do this. So uh, Mr. Stefan Lovegrove is who I'm going to be talking to today. And uh, this might be the most handsome live that will be on Facebook all week. Thank you, Dave Gieselman. You're so stinking sweet. All right, so I'm going to prove Stefan to be on. I want him to hear this. So Stefan, when you get on... I'm going to allow you. There he is. Beautiful, beautiful human. Look at that beard. It's coming in. It is coming in. Hello in so, Encinitas. Steph Are you in Encinitas today? I am. I'm in lovely Encinitas. So, Stefan, I'm going to give you that shameless plug for who you are as a human while you're sitting here watching, just taking it in. Okay. So you just I'll take it in. So, perfect. So, everybody, I have known Stefan perhaps the longest of almost any coach or mentor or spiritual guide that I have seen um, that I've that I've been aware of for, for for pretty much my entire career. I've known Stefan for I think since like 2014 since 2015 ish uh, time frame, and the level to which this man has grown in his practice um, as a human, like humaning, and also his practice as a businessman and um, and just like all around kick ass human uh, just continues to amaze and stun me. And I just, the level of lucidity with which you come to your work, Stefan, just continues to inspire me and so many hundreds of, and I want to say hundreds of thousands, because that's probably where it is or where it's growing to very quickly and eventually millions um, if it's not already there. So um, with that said, I am so, so excited to have on Stefan Lovegrove. Thanks for coming on, brother. Yeah, well, I know you said in the title of this video, you've been excited for it all week. And I feel the same way, which is great. Isn't it great when it's, you know, I tell my clients, you want a full body, wholehearted fuck yes, uh, which doing this conversation with you is. So uh, I love when that's mutual. And I felt so excited all week for this. And, um, you know, it's really, it's real, a funny thing we talk about with the coaching space, there's a very low bar for entry and a very high bar for success, which doesn't ever worry me because I'm like the people really doing powerful, needed, beautiful work in the world are always clear. Um, and you know, I've been in this space for about seven and a half, eight years total. I've been coaching for four. That's certainly true. And we do go way back. I mean, 2014, 2015, you're talking almost back to the very beginning there. Uh, and it's been yeah. such an honor and a joy to see you rise as well. And um, yeah, we're gonna keep rising together. But anyway, I'm gonna, I'll say more kind words about you next week. He'll be on my channel next week for all of my people who are watching this via share. And I'll say more kind words about you then. But for in the meantime, it's great to be here today. Thank you. Yeah, Stefan, this is so exciting. So there are so many things. And again, like I said about the lucidity piece that I absolutely just adore about you, Stefan. And this is something where I'd love to start today. Um, sure. I think we can talk about your story and all those fun things. And I actually, I want to get into that a little bit today, but somewhere where I want to start, which is this level of grounded spirituality that you bring to the table that I think a lot of, there's a lot of um, spiritual mentors and people out there that are that are rocking it on that front and and we're connecting to all of our chakras and the lights and the the universe and th the 10 dimensions and all those things it's beautiful the 10 yeah. dimensions that's that's a clear example following right yeah and 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 then there's also the the people and the work that i do which is this very like primal nervous system work that i know that you also dabble into but what i love is that you're able to stretch between heaven and earth and really have a fluid 
translation of the two. And that is where your work really lands. And even with the work that you're doing now with Prayer of the Mastermind, which we're, I know we're going to dive into today, which I'm just freaking giddy for my people to hear more about this. But I want you to just tell me a little bit more about what gets you excited about the work that you're doing and what makes it, um, I hate to say what makes it special, but like, what is it for you that makes it like super come alive and why people are so attracted to you and the work that you're doing? Well, I mean, that's a big question. Uh, there's a lot that I love and a lot that makes me come alive. Um, but I'll start with this. I think um, I grew up obviously in a very polarized kind of world that was all about extremes. And so I think that really taught me that a lot of times there's so much wisdom and so much grace and so many gifts to receive in the middle, right? And in so many areas of life and leadership and business, I see people go to one extreme and then, you know, revert to the complete opposite extreme. And there's such like treasure in the middle that they never quite land on, I feel like. And, you know, on, on one extreme, there is something so powerful about connecting to your body and knowing yourself and feeling deeply that your heart is your best friend and that you can trust it and that the information it's giving you is for you. And, and there's something so powerful about that. Um, and yet, there's also this realization that we have this massive universe out there that is continually expanding. Our knowledge of it is continually expanding. Are you aware that in 2008, they thought there were 2 billion galaxies? And just 10 years later, we now know that there's over 2 trillion. So our universe is expanding. Our knowledge of it is expanding. And so th there's so much, right? It feels like there's so much in consciousness. There's so much out there. There's so much to learn. And I think that's a lot for people to know what to do with. Like I've got me and I've got my yeah. body and my feelings and my truth and this. And then there's the universe and the dimensions and the, all of this. And um, yeah. I guess as you were saying this, what came up for me that I felt led to share is just, I always start from the knowing that all of God, or if you wanna say all of the universe, all of infinite loving intelligence, is right here right now and so everybody watching this can just take a breath and breathe into the most important place we could possibly be the most important thing we could possibly be doing the most important moment we could be in is this one right this place right here right now and i think that's that's where the whole heaven on earth thing begins to break through is whoever you are, wherever you may be, whatever you're going through, let's start from the premise that all of that infinite loving intelligence is right here inside of you, with you, present as you right now. Let's start there. To me, that's a very expansive place, but also a very grounded place simultaneously. Yeah, so good stuff and so good. And what I'd love to hear, well, I have a couple questions. First off, how do you get into such inspired places? Because I freaking love that. And I have a feeling I know I have a sense of what one of those things might be. And my other thing is also, what has brought you to this place? Because you were a, such a different man when I met you in 2014, 2015. So I want to know what have been some of the influences for you that have been sprinkled in and that have made you this like beautiful soup of, of awesome human. So, okay, so I understand the second question. Can you clarify the first for me? <laughs> what, what are you referring to so, with these inspiring places? I'm just not sure I understand the first question. You are so compelling to watch stuff. And, and, and guys, just appreciate and just love that this could just be a total bromance conversation over the next hour. We can but, do that. I'm uh, down with that. Yeah, let's do that. So, but, so that's my question is though, what gets you into the inspired, what gets you into the flow? What is it for you that gets you into this really inspired place where you can just go and the passion is there and you're in it and you're on it? Because I think that that's something that a lot of us are wanting more of. And I think especially in the high performance place, it's like, how do I get into flow um, so effortlessly? And I think for you, some of it's really natural. And I think there's also a level of like, I know that there's work that's happening under the, um, under the surface that we're not always like privy to. So I would love to like open that up. Right, okay, so, so I think there's two things that I would share to answer that question. 
Um, one of them is there is an extent to which um, a lot of it is continually, repeatedly self-initiated and a choice that I make again and again and again. And here's a, a perfect example that I'll give of this literally up to the minute this week live example from my life. Here we go. Um, so one of the things that's a huge benefit to me is I always like 30 minutes ish before I go to bed, turn my phone on airplane mode and start the day on airplane mode. And that is a huge thing for me because it means I get to choose the information that is first put into my consciousness at the beginning of the day. And I, as I sit here and say that, I'm like, that's so easy, that's so simple, that's so obvious. But yet 99% of people, even in the personal growth world, you're starting the day with email, you're starting the day with Facebook, you're starting the day, this is my new example is, if you start the day with, with CNBC and your stocks and your investments, that's just as bad as the news because you're still victim to a number and putting yourself at the mercy of circumstance. And, and the bottom line is, if you don't take responsibility for what enters your consciousness first at the beginning of the day, if you leave that up to chance, that's a big thing to leave up to chance, right? And like, especially, man, if you're starting the day with push notifications and Facebook and your inbox, 90% of the marketing out there is geared towards triggering some type of thing in your nervous system. So you're starting the day with, why aren't you getting more clients? Why aren't you scaling faster? Do you know the real reason why? And so the whole narrative, you're starting the day with not enough, not enough, not enough, or or whatever other storyline of fear. And so I think there's a lot of little choices that I make consistently. So to start every morning where my first 20 to 30 minutes, they're accounted for and I choose what enters my consciousness first. I think there are a lot of choices that I make like that. Um, one thing all my clients know is I have a fun, sexy, healthy relationship with money and part of that is every single day for about 10 or 15 minutes, looking at the numbers, affirming the story that I now choose to experience and working on that relationship. So uh, for me, the flow is not some accidental thing that like, let me just lay in bed, open my phone and hope that I end up in the flow. I think a lot of it is being self-initiated. Um, but the other thing I would say is I very much operate in this truth versus illusion paradigm, which is a very Course in Miracles framework, um, which if for those of you who aren't familiar, of course, I have it on my desk at all times. So I can always be like, it's right here. A Course in Miracles is really my favorite spiritual text. And one of the concepts that is so core to it is this idea that the truth is always the truth. So love, joy, peace, abundance, bliss, happiness, that is always the truth of who you are and available to you and the core of the universe. But having free will means you can miscreate all these other things. So you can have an experience of lack. You can have an experience of scarcity or any other thing. And understanding that has been so fundamental for me because I know that even if I'm caught up in a story or an experience or a, an energy that really feels real at the time, I know that there's a truth I can go back to that's deeper. Um, so I think that's a huge part of it for me. So good, so good. And then the second question was, what's really brought Stefan to where he is today in his practice, um, obviously personally, but also professionally? Like what's really brought you here? What are the mentors? Who are the people? You could, mom and dad could be a part of that. Yeah. What's um, really brought you are today? Well, I think part of it is um, when you grow up in an extreme ideology, and particularly when you're inherently, because I was gay growing up in this fundamentalist Christian cult, I'm inherently an outsider to it. So that turns oh, your didn't... brain. You didn't know that. I didn't know you grew up in a fundamentalist Christian. No, I didn't know that. Yeah, I did. Um, this is live real moment on the interview, guys. He's finding it out for the first time. That's how you know it's real TV. No, but seriously, um, that turned my brain on at an early age. And honestly, you know, this is, this is actually very interesting because I grew up in a world where we're supposed to believe in an all loving and an all powerful God, right? But there was this big accept clause. So 
God is all loving and God is all powerful and God is on your side. God is for you. God has a great plan for your life, except unless not including. And there was this huge except, hey, Brandon Bozarth, so good to feel your energy here. Um, there was this huge except. And I, for my entire childhood, was that except. I mean, I figured out I was gay at like 11 or 12 years old. So all through middle school and high school, I was the except. Except if you're gay. Except if all these things. Except if you've had an abortion. Except if you got divorced. Except if you're all these things. And yeah. that except made me realize no matter how loving this thing was supposed to be, what I was being taught was inherently conditional, right? So that made me really want to seek out what the fuck is, I don't know if you cuss on your, I forget how much you cuss on yourself. No, but it made me, it, it really made me ask, what the fuck is the point of a conditional God? And, and by the way, <laughs> let me just step on some toes. Hurting that up, you're crazy. If you're not hurting that up, guys, what is the point of a conditional God? Highlight, underline, all of it. Keep going. Well, and one of the things that I've realized, especially over the last year and a half, which is kind of where Prayer the Mastermind was born out of, is so many people have God trauma in this community. So, I, I mean, I'm talking people who are spiritual leaders, people who are making seven, eight figures, people that a lot of people look to for spiritual guidance, and they would never admit like how much trauma is still unresolved, how much question, you know, how many questions they still have, how much pain there still is there. But I've really seen over the past year and a half, so many people are there. And what I realize a lot of people have done is they never healed the God stuff. And they just transferred it over to other language, which, by the way, I have no problem with. Let's talk about source. Let's talk about spirit. Let's talk about the universe. But in many cases, we transferred over the language, but we never healed the wound. So though it's kind of like, you know, we, we desegregated in America, but we didn't heal the deep racial tension and wounds. So we still have the stuff happening at Starbucks. Um, people didn't heal the, the wound. So now you're trying to believe in a universe that's for you, but deep in the recesses of your subconscious is this anthropomorphic man in the sky God who's still kind of pissed at you because you're having sex every Friday night and you don't know how God feels about that. So meanwhile, we're using the word source because I don't have trauma around source, but still my subconscious is afraid God's mad at me. So I get what it's like to be there because that's my life. That's, you know, that's me. And so, so much of my journey is, what if there really is an unconditional God? What if God really is unconditional love? And what if regardless of what we do or how we show up on any given day, we are permanently and unconditionally whole? That is my starting point now. But I think it took a long time to get there. And a lot of how I have shifted is moving away from this external, like we're just gonna manifest all the things conversation to like a deeper <laughs> truth about us, a deeper truth about love, a deeper truth about life. And man, it feels so good. Ugh, so many goosebumps. And I would say check them out, but I'm so freaking hairy. <laughs> you wouldn't even be able to see. Ugh, Stefan, yes, everything about that. So tell me, how does that then play into what you're doing now? I wanna hear about prayer. I want to hear, I want to like hear in your words what prayer is and what it means to you. And we can talk about the mastermind too. That'll probably lead into that. But like, tell me about prayer. And tell yeah. Me about well, been okay. So I want to start with my childhood paradigm of prayer, because I think it's where 95% yeah. of people are at with prayer and how they view it. So um, most people, I am here and God is somewhere out there. He might be up. Yeah. He might be a he, he might have a penis. If we're saying he. But God is some external thing, right? Whether it's an anthropomorphic man in the sky or whether we're talking about an external force, being, whatever it is, it's out there. And so as I was taught to think about prayer, it's like little me is here and I'm praying and my prayers are going up, out into the cosmos and hopefully they're being received and maybe the God that's out there can do something and maybe he'll say yes Maybe she'll say no, maybe I'll get an answer, maybe there will be a delay. And so I think that's the concept of separation that most people are starting from with prayer is I'm here praying to an out there God. So first and foremost, we need to come back to the truth. 
There is no separation. We're all one. There's only one of us here. We're all connected. Starting from the premise that there's no separation and starting from where I began in this interview, all of God is right here. So let's be clear. There's nowhere else we need to go. There's no other place that we need. There's no other, like, all of God is right here in this moment. So I'm not praying to someone or something out there, right? I am really tapping into and connecting with something that is inherently within me. So that's, I think that's the first big shift about prayer is we're not talking about an external God out there that we're praying to. We're talking about a, a God is all there is. Let's tap into that, which is a completely different conversation. Um, also, the kind of prayer that I practice on a daily basis and that I've really seen bring about transformation is affirmative prayer. So this is really interesting because this is actually very like on board with Jesus, even though I wasn't really taught this growing up. Um, but there's a famous quote where Jesus says, when you pray, believe that you have already received what you are asking for. And when you do, it is done, right? And th I mean, that's a Jesus quote. Like I didn't get that from like a Wiccan heaven in a basement in New York or whatever, I, whatever my mother thinks I do in this world of spirituality. Um, that, that's a Jesus quote, but I, nobody ever explained the metaphysics of that to me growing up, right? So the concept is, I'm not asking for an anthropomorphic God. Like, you know, I like gospel music, but I always use the example I, I will not listen to gospel music that sounds like we're begging a slave master to let us go home early. Like I, I will not, I will not get on board with that kind of gospel music. Um, and so prayer to me is not about let's beg and beseech an outside external God to see if he'll give us something. Prayer is about, I know that I have divine authority and creative power within me. So I am going to stand in the frequency of who I am, of what I desire, of what I'm calling in. And, and prayer is not a like request act. Prayer is a creative act where I am literally letting something come into reality through me. So that's, I mean, there's so much I could say, but we'll start with that because that's prayer to me. And I know you guys can hear and feel we're talking about a different conversation than a lot of us are used to with prayer. Yes. Oh my God. I love that. So in the third module of my course, I teach, I teach a personal creed and it's a very similar thing as this, like, it's this like percussive, like rumbling through you, like God, like just feeling everything um, that that is. So that's so beautiful stuff. And, and I would love, um, yeah, I feel like I feel like part of and I'm curious if you ever have this trauma. I feel like a lot of people might resonate with this. For me, it was really interesting growing up. I grew up with the anthropomorphic God. It's this big, hairy, uh, white hair man in the sky right. to then I, I, to then I shifted to yoga where it was this level of I even have a tattoo on my arm that says Atman on it, which is the divine self, the divine within to where it became like, you know what, screw that guy like God's inside of me. And it was like, and it was almost this like cutting off of the the God mm -hmm. that's also outside of me. And it was just this internal version of God. And I'm, I'm curious, some folks that are still dealing with this or experiencing these shifts to to now having uh, the God within me and the God without me as well. And so it's really beautiful, the work that you're doing. And I think this is a great even transition to prayer, the mastermind that it's, it's this, it's this yes. And it's the, it's the God within. Yeah. Me and that is, and having that, that is so good. And I love that you picked up on that because, you know, I believe most people want to be connected to something bigger than themselves. Um, particularly, I mean, I, I'm in a city, I'm in LA, for those of you who don't know me, um, based out of LA. This is a city where people get a lot of fame, a lot of success, a lot of notoriety, money, status, whatever it is, often very quickly but it can also feel meaningless very quickly. And so certainly I see even people at the top in any field of business, or entertainment, whatever it may be, most of us want to be connected to something bigger than ourselves. And so, you know, my preferred phrase when I don't use the word God, there's so many words we could use, right? This is such a beautiful thing. There's over 130 
words for God. And we're talking about something wow. invisible. So it can't fundamentally be defined or contained by language. Language is pointing at God, not the other way around. Um, because there's there's okay. so many names and the name isn't the point. God, again, God doesn't have a penis or an ego. So God's not upset about it. But here's the thing. <laughs> I use the phrase, right? I use the phrase universal loving intelligence for a reason because it speaks to this fundamental truth that we are talking about something that fully encompasses you and is within you, but also is all of this and all of us, right? So the God that is fully present within me, but also fully present within you, and also fully present within every single person watching this live or on the replay. And I do think that part often gets left out. And actually, you know, these are the kind of conversations that people have behind the scenes and never on camera. So let's have it on camera. Um, I don't know if you were feeling this, but last year there was like this weird wave of people that were converting back to being evangelical Christians, um, which was really interesting to observe in kind of the new age space and the business space. And, yep. and I really was fascinated by what is really driving people to, to be pulled in this direction. A lot of what I found is people never, A, people never had a coherent worldview, right? So they, they had a bunch of cliches and concepts that didn't integrate together. And so they felt kind of lost. But also because a lot of these people had been, had ended up in this very individual experience that felt very small, where it was like, well, just be in touch with your feelings. And God is so much bigger than that, right? <laughs> There's this infinite power, infinite love, infinite presence. So anyway, I love that you picked up on that because I think it is, I think it is a both and, and we're talking about the all. And that is the power of, I'm not just connected to my, my needs, my thoughts, my ideas, my heart, my desires. All of that is, is necessary and important, but also what happens when I connect to the infinite loving intelligence that knows my highest and best in every possible way? What a powerful source of awareness to go to. And I don't remember if you had a question beyond that that I forgot, but I just love that you picked up on that and I wanted to talk about that for a bit. Yeah, you answered whatever the question was. Yeah, okay. and I feel like this is, so, this is such a good conversation because um, even in the work that I do, I talk so much about your relationship to yourself, your relationship to others, and your relationship to your craft. But I think there's also the relationship to God that we're, that we're like not always addressing. And I think it's fascinating. And I think it's, um, this is just so good that it's like, it's not only how is my relationship to myself and to God, but also how does that plug into community as well, right? And like, and, and this is where, dun, 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 we actually lead into, I wanna hear about the mastermind. Like this, I like, you can't contain me anymore, Stefan. I wanna know, tell me about the mastermind. Okay, well, so here's, <laughs> here's the, the quick Cliff Notes story. I'm not good at Cliff Notes, but we're gonna try. Here's the Cliff Notes story of how this came about. Um, so Danielle Randall is my partner in Prayer the Mastermind. If someone wants to tag her, I know some of my people are on this live. Um, so she's like, her, her hashtag used to be not your mama's minister. She is a minister of spiritual consciousness that is just absolutely badass. Uh, Danielle is the kind of person who was living in New York at the time of 9-11. And for months after that tragedy, would walk by that area in Manhattan and see, like literally see the spirits and energies suspended in the air who just wanted to be acknowledged before they left because their lives were taken. Like Danielle is next level intuitive, next level psychic, next level powerful. So just quick plug, I love and believe in Danielle so much. If you want a fascinating read that will open you up and also be a great book, I Met God in a Nightclub is her thing. So Danielle and I started praying and actually, and both of us have had prayer practices and prayer partners prior to this. Um, but Danielle and I actually prayed together for a full six months and two things happened. Number one, we watched how it changed us. We watched how it changed our lives, our leadership, our businesses, our bank accounts, our families. We watched what it was doing for us, right? But we also noticed when people needed something to shift, 
we were their first call. And this was so interesting because it's not intuitive to either of us to think we're gonna offer prayer as a service, right? Like it's still something that people ask us all the time and are like, oh, so you're getting paid to pray? And we're like, yeah, let's have a conversation about it. Cause it's not, it wasn't intuitive to us either, right? But what was happening is, yeah. and these are people who like had coaches, had mentors, had masterminds, had all sorts of support. But when the rubber met the road, and they really needed something to shift, they were calling us. And, and not just for like, I really want my launch to go well, so whatever. I'm talking like, <laughs> I, I'm not throwing shade launches, not for my people, but I hear launches can theoretically be stressful. I don't know, that's what they say. Um, no, but I, I'm talking like, when, you're, when you cheated on your spouse and you don't know what to do, when your kid is suicidal, when your parent gets diagnosed with cancer. I mean, in those moments where no amount of money is a quick fix and you don't know what to do or where to turn. In those moments, people were calling us and they wanted not just, I want prayer. I mean, I always joke with people, you want free prayer, Google free prayer lines. You can get a poem read to you in no time. There's a million out there. Um, but they wanted us to pray because they figured out if those two people pray, the thing is gonna shift. And it's true. And, and so over our six months, I don't um, And we, are we back? Okay, we're back. Um, yeah. And we saw all kinds of things happen. You know, one story that's really moving and meaningful to me is, uh, we saw somebody whose spouse was suicidal have really a complete emotional turnaround within 30 minutes and go on to this beautiful recovery and a complete change in the household dynamics. And, and here's the powerful thing. There was no session done. There was no coaching. There was no mentoring. There was no, it was literally, we brought it into our prayer field and that happened. Um, and that happened again and again and again. So that was the birth of us realizing, wait a second, people at the top want prayer in the moments that matter most. Interesting observation. And I'll just throw this out there for anyone who's a business owner. Your people probably want things from you that you're not listening to. So somebody catch that today because I guarantee you, some of you are sitting on feedback where like, People are fascinated by something. People are asking for something. People are drawn to something and you're completely missing it, right? So pay attention. So we realized people want this and there is a whole group of people that they're like, listen, I don't wanna hire somebody else. I don't wanna do another program right now. I don't need more information. I don't need another thing to put on my schedule. I don't need something to take up my time. I just want to know that for anything and everything that I'm going through, that I need, that I want, I have a place to take it. And, and really it's a different thing. Cause I'm, you know, my one-on-one -on -one clients are people who really want to do the work, right? This is kind of the opposite because this is people who they want a done for you experience of support, right? They want to feel taken care of and supported at a higher level than ever before. So that's how it was born. Um, so essentially Love. the two do you, you can interject interject no I love that I love that on so many levels Stefan because I think that um, I think that in self-development and personal development there's the, there's been this this idea that it has to be really painful and that you have to do all the really deep like excavating of all the parental wounds and all the things in order to have success. Right. And I think that that's, I think there's a lot of, there's a lot of worth in that and saying that like, if you're eating a shit cupcake, it, even though it's got frosting, it's still a shit like that. I get that. And you do need to pull out the, the weeds, but it doesn't have to be painful. It doesn't have to be really ugly and it doesn't have to take up a lot of your time. And I think that that is, the conversation that we need to have, be having a lot more of because I think that spirituality actually works that way and actually some things in fact everything can be easy not everything has to be this arduous grinding thing 
But I think that we're brought up in this consciousness that it has to be really hard work or it's not worth anything. And what I think that you're sharing and the work that you guys are doing, um, and I'm so freaking excited to get to know your, your, uh, your lovely lady, uh, is, that, is that it doesn't have to be hard. And in mm. fact, that you don't have to put it extra time even. And then all yeah. you have to do is offer it up and you got it covered. Yeah, well, and you know, I'll, I'll tell you the secret that's not really a secret is a lot of the real power here is about the power of agreement, right? Um, because anything can shift at any time in an instant. Like, let's be very clear. Let's talk metaphysics for 20 seconds here. When we talk about this phrase that A Course in Miracles uses, the holy instant, what'd you say? I said just for 20 seconds. Just for just 20 seconds, 20 then 20 we'll seconds. get back to the rest. No, but <laughs> when we use this phrase, the holy we'll instant, stuff. what we're talking about is within yeah. this moment, there is a power and an intelligence that actually transcends space and time. So no matter what you feel like is going on in the literal linear timeline of your story, something can happen where outside of space and time, transcending space and time, collapsing space and time, things shift and you, you literally exit one quantum reality and enter another. So that's what I believe in. But here's the reason that that usually doesn't work for people is sometimes it's hard to hold that level of belief on your own. Right? So yeah, can you shift something on your own? Can you decide? I don't have to be, I saw you post the other day about you're addicted to struggle and drama and friction, right? You don't have to be. So could somebody watching this decide, I don't have to live this way anymore? Done, non-negotiable decision. Absolutely. But what most of us know experientially is when it's just you trying to believe in that shift, that can be a leap. And that can feel like too big of a leap in the moment. I'll tell you, you know, we all have a spot that's harder to have faith in the possibility of a shift than others. For me, it's health. Like the slightest thing goes wrong. And I'm in this whole mental storyline about, oh God, gonna end up in Cedar sinai I hope I at least end up next to Beyonce for some reason. And I have this whole narrative going on in my head. And, <laughs> but for some people it's finances. Yeah. For some people it's your kids. Like, what is the area that you struggle to release and just trust the shift has occurred? So the power comes in agreement because literally one of the very first miracles Danielle and I saw is somebody was diagnosed with cancer and Danielle and I held a vision of perfect health, healing and wholeness reigning in their body. And a week later, the cancer was gone. And I think we've now prayed, I don't know, in the six months of our experiment with it, maybe four or five people minimum through the experience of getting a diagnosis like that. And there's something powerful about, I'm believing that this can shift, but I'm not believing this on my own. And regardless of where my level of belief is at, they're going to believe with me and for me and every single day, regardless of where my faith is at, they're holding the vision. That's where I think the power really starts to come oh. in. Yes. Can I get some, so some cool neuroscience on this? Yeah. The limbic brain and even our heart live outside of space and time. Linear time is only a projection of the prefrontal cortex. That's something that's like only been around for 10,000 years. So, so really to do this kind of healing, like you're saying, it can happen literally in an instant which I just absolutely love. And one of my favorite things that a mentor ever said to me, Stefan, is borrow my belief in you mm -hmm. while you're building your own. Yeah. And that was literally my first mentor, Shannon Graham. Shout him out right here. Shannon Graham was my first mentor in this uh, industry. And I say that to clients to this day because it has such a profound effect uh, on our ability to believe in ourselves because we know that there is somebody else also believing in us at the same time. So um, tremendous. And tremendous. how- Any other things you wanna to add to that? Because, yeah, please. I think we're on what I call the Baghdad delay where you know when it's like international broadcast and they're like, and now we go live to Baghdad, Cassandra, and there's like a seven second pause. We have the Baghdad delay, but we're gonna move through it. Um, you know, the beautiful thing is, 
if you believe, but then you wonder what else you need to do or what you might have left out or what you're doing wrong, you're canceling out your belief. So this is what most people do. And I love using the Facebook posting example because it's so right where many people live is you do the post and you're like, I'm sharing this thing. I'm so excited about it. I'm lit up. I feel great. You know, I'm passionate. This is from my heart. Going to share it. And so they're in a good vibration. They share this. They type this post. They hit share. And then as soon as they hit share, this weird thing happens where they immediately shift back into doubt and their brain goes to, I don't know. I don't know. How, what is the algorithm going to do with that post? Do you think people are going to know what I'm talking about? Are they going to read it? Why haven't I gotten any messages and it's 30 minutes later? Damn it. I should have done a live stream. And before, do you see how for so many people, the belief is immediately canceled out by the thought that they haven't done enough or they didn't do it right or they're doing something wrong. So what we're giving you permission to do is, okay, let's say that you and your partner want to conceive, excuse me, and you're having problems conceiving, right? You have connected access to Danielle and I, and it's all, by the way, because of the caliber of people that are in this experience, it's all protected within NDAs. We have background checks. Everything is super private, secure, which is honestly a huge benefit of it is these are the kinds of people that don't have a lot of protected containers to really take the real shit that's going on in their life. Um, but let's say, I mean, that's a very intimate thing. You and your partner are trying to conceive and you can't conceive. Instead of wondering, what are we doing wrong? What personal development work do I have to do? How many healers we got to hire? To literally be able to say, I want to have a child. My wife wants to have a child. This is our request. We're trying to have a child. And to just hand it off, and we use the phrase, set it and forget it. We literally are inviting people into the energetics of, you have put it on the virtual altar, so to speak, and you don't pick it up until it's done. Because God's got it, the universe has got it, and we've got it, and you are done. Really, the power is the frequency that it is done. We're just giving people a way to live at the frequency of answered prayer. Does that make sense? Because if you, if you live at the yes, frequency amen. of Thank answered you. prayer, the frequency oh. is the answer. Oh. Yeah. Answered prayer. Yeah, see, seeing the thing as done. Right. Yeah. And I, I do want to say, because so, I know you're into science. Oh, we're on the delay again. Um, I do want to say, science. we wanted science. for the science people, when we were putting together the invitation for this, we wanted the science people to really get... Like we wanted to have research for them. You know what I mean? I'm like, let's, here's the research. If you don't believe in holographic universe and all of that stuff, here's the research. And so, you know, we have a list of over 30 physical, emotional, mental benefits that prayer is certified to provide. But one of the craziest things to me is they have literally done studies that people being prayed for, not doing the praying, because then we could say it's a placebo effect, right? We're not joined in consciousness. You're just tricking yourself. And so you're alleviating stress and it's a placebo. But people being prayed for in a focused, concentrated, deliberate way, they have done everything from studying people trying to conceive, studying people in the hospital with cancer and everything in between. And they literally find much higher conception rates, double the healing and recovery rates for people with cancer prayed for. They didn't even know they were being prayed for. So I, anyway, I just want to throw that out there because I was a little reluctant to look into the science of things of like, what if it turns out that you just have to be like super woo woo and there is no science on this. It turns out there is science on this and there is research and it's really cool. So good. So good. Stefan, before we have zero Wi-Fi connection left, um, <laughs> imagining that there's a poverty of, of a scarcity of minds of a uh, Wi-Fi connection. Um, uh, how do we like, how do we get a hold of you? What's the best way to like find out more about prayer, the mastermind? What's the easiest way to connect with you? Yeah. Um, so I always say my Facebook inbox is always open for business. So uh, if you contact me there, there may be a delay. I don't guarantee immediate replies, but I will get to your inquiry question, whatever it is. 
Um, essentially, what we would invite you into if you're drawn to this is there is a 30 page invitation. Don't worry, they're not long to read pages. But it's, we really wanted to put all of the heart, all of the intention, all of the, the concept clearly laid out so you can not just read it, but really feel it and understand the power in this container. So if you're feeling drawn to it, what we would invite people to do is message me on Facebook. If you know Danielle, feel free to message her. But since you're watching this interview, it's probably easier. Message me um, and we will get you the invitation. It is by invitation only, but that provides you a link to the application, et, et cetera. So that would be the next step if you're feeling drawn to prayer. And in general, my thing is popping up. Uh, in general, say hi on Facebook. Connect, follow, do your thing. I'm here on Facebook. Cool. You're so lovely. There's no words for you, Stefan. I'm just so excited. I, I feel exuberant and like ready to do things. Like I just feel excited about life every moment that I get to talk with you. So um, I hope everyone, I know that everyone is feeling that and is in that same vibration right now. So uh, all I can say is thank you. And it's been such a pleasure. And I love that there's so much more to come. So woohoo. Yeah. Thank you. Can I just say one more thing that I just am inspired to say? Because ah. um, I know that you're all about high performance Please. in a new paradigm even though we've acknowledged that it's a buzzword before our interview today. Um, and, you know, one of my favorite concepts of prayer and spiritual practice from A Course in Miracles is that one minute connected to the truth of your being, your source, your core, one minute of that um, is enough to fast forward a thousand years of unnecessary time. And so to go full circle with the title today, that's what we're talking about here with the new paradigm of high performance is when you connect to the, the unconditional love place and the wholeness place and the infinite loving intelligence place. <clears throat> it sounds like I'm crying, but I'm not. My <laughs> <clears throat> but we can go with that. I'll cry too. That's fine because it is beautiful. Um, connect to that place, so much space and time is saved. And that's my definition of high performance. And you do that every day, you are a different person. And then you get to have these fun conversations about, man, I'm not where I was six months ago. I'm not where I was a year ago. And that's your lived experience. So you're beautiful. You're fabulous. You're such a powerful leader and presence. And I cannot wait to have you next week. But thank you for your Thank you for this little bromance Wednesday afternoon chat. <laughs> Absolutely. So much love, Stefan. Thank you so much, brother. And guys, please, obviously, shoot him an immediate message. Like, you're silly if you're not... Or it's a silly thing not to shoot him a message. Um, and if you're not following him, absolutely follow Stefan. His, his, his work is so moving on every single level, uh, spiritually, physically, mentally, emotionally. I mean, truly, I've felt all of these waves as I see his work flood through the, inter the interwebs. So uh, again, thanks so much, Stefan. And uh, we'll talk to you really soon, brother. Thank you. Have a beautiful day. <laughs> thanks, brother. Bye-bye.